So far, I've tried 11 Xbox controllers ranging from cheap ones like the $26 Power Enhanced to expensive ones like the $200 Hex Gaming Advance. So you're trying all of these controllers, here's what I've learned. I'd say the first and the biggest thing to know about Xbox controllers is the vast variety of controllers that are made for it. There are so many different versions of Xbox controllers, all made by different companies, and they're all pretty good. In that aspect, they have their main competitor, PlayStation, beat by a mile. PlayStation basically has their standard main controllers, and there's no other good options until you start to get to the really expensive ones like Scuff. And speaking of price, the second big thing to know is that overall, Xbox controllers are a lot cheaper than PlayStation. Both platforms kind of start their standard controllers at the same price, between like $60 and $70, but with all the different companies competing in the Xbox controller category, I think that's driven the price down a lot. And there's some great options at literally every price point. I think the cheapest good Xbox controller there is, is the Power A Enhanced, which is a wired only controller that starts their white version at $26. You can probably find some that are cheaper, but they're gonna be no-name brands that are just awful. After that one, though, I'd say the next best option, to me at least, is the Turtle Beach Recon, which is usually on sale for $44. So another one that's significantly cheaper than the standard Xbox One controller, but also has way more features on it. That just doesn't exist for PlayStation. And real quick, I'm gonna race to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you could help me get there, I'd be super appreciative. Also, all these controllers that I'm talking about are listed in the description if you wanna check any of them out. So after the, like, $40 range Turtle Beach Recon, you have your standard Xbox option at 60-ish dollars. But right at this price point is also the Power A Fusion Pro 2, which is a four paddle, swappable faceplate, interchangeable thumbstick controller. It's honestly crazy to me that Xbox has these good controller options for the same price or less than their standard Xbox One controller. Going up from there though, you get to maybe my favorite Xbox controller of all time, the $100 Vitrix Gambit. I say maybe because I'm in between this and one other one. But on the Vitrix Gambit specifically, I really like the paddles layout, which you can actually choose between two or four. And not only that, but it has a ton of customization. Like there's swappable face plates, there's trigger stops, there's interchangeable thumbsticks. There's just a ton of stuff going on. By the way, just to compare, within the $100 price point on PlayStation, the only option is a standard controller. Specifically with PS4, there's a couple paddles attachments that'll make the total of the controller setup under $100. But a standard PS4 controller with paddles compared to all the features that the Vitrix Gambit have for the same price is just, it's nuts. Again, I keep saying it, but it is. And before you think I'm something like X Xbox fanboy, I don't even like the feel of Xbox controllers. The main controller that I use is actually a custom PS4 controller, but I mean, there's no denying that overall, Xbox has a better selection at better prices. Like, I would absolutely love to actually enjoy the shape of the Xbox controller, but I just have never gotten used to it. Going back to sort of the Xbox controller selection, after the Vitrix Gambit, the next good option would probably be like the Xbox Elite Core, which I've never used, but it's basically a $120 budget version of the Elite Series 2. Right around this price point, you can start to get some very base models of custom controllers, but for just like the $150 range, the features can honestly be pretty lackluster. Like you're not gonna be able to add any custom colors, you're not gonna be able to add like trigger stops or any of the cool stuff. So my favorite $200 range controller is the Xbox Elite Series 2, but specifically paired with the scuff paddles, which are an additional $20. To me, the normal paddles are way too skinny, so this other paddles option is a must-have. Past this like $200 range, you start to get into the customs and really premium brands like scuff. In my opinion, these controllers aren't that enticing because the features are pretty much the same as the last few controllers. Sometimes, once you actually go up in price, there's technically less features and less customization. So in my opinion, the only reason you spend more than $200 on an Xbox-style controller is to completely customize the colorway, or if there's a specific design of the feature that you like. For example, maybe on the $220 Scuff Instinct Pro, that paddles option looks like something you'd really like and you haven't found anything cheaper that looks like that. Other than that, going higher in price kind of seems unnecessary. To make another comparison, the crazy thing is, I don't think I've ever seen an Xbox controller that costs more than the like $250 range. But then if we look over at PlayStation controllers, that's right about where any of the other good controller options start. And even then, I've never seen a PlayStation controller that's nearly as customizable as a lot of these Xbox ones. But now that you know like a good range of Xbox controllers, I guess the next best thing to talk about is the best feature. The first and most important thing for me is the controller has to have paddles. I typically play with four paddles, but I can make two work if it's needed. So once I find a controller that has paddles, my favorite paddle style is a more fat, like top-down style where I can designate one finger to each paddle because that way I can click them super fast. For example, on something like the Scuff Instinct, you have four paddles all laid out horizontally. So when you're holding the controller, you have to click all four paddles with just two fingers. Versus on something like the Xbox Elite Series 2, how it's more of a top-down, I can designate each of my middle fingers and ring fingers to one paddle and I can click them way faster. The next feature, which provides the biggest advantage, is definitely trigger stops. There's two types of these, and the first are the variable stops, where the trigger 
triggers can either be like normal depth, and then with just the flip of a switch, the triggers can be like almost instant press. That style is available on controllers like the Bitrix Gambit and the Xbox Elite Series 2. And another trigger stop option is usually on higher end custom controllers like the Hex Gaming Advance, where the trigger is barely pressed down and that's the only form they can be in. After triggers, I really like my grips, so I usually look for that next. The last thing that I look for is interchangeable thumbsticks. I usually like a taller right thumbstick for mainly my aim and mobility. Well, it's not a necessity, and that's why it's sort of towards the end of the list of features for me. The very last thing that I look at is if the controller is wired only or not. I personally play on PC, and I only ever play with my controller while it's plugged in, so that literally doesn't matter to me. But that's not the case for everyone, and that's why this is my personal list of features. But if you're someone that has to have a wireless controller, then that's going to be towards the top of your list. It's all based on your personal needs. The next thing to note would be durability, which might be the most controversial thing about controllers in general. I've personally never had a controller break on me, whether that's Xbox or PlayStation. Some of my sticks have slightly more drift, but I just turn up my dead zone a couple percent and I can't notice a difference. Now this could be due to the fact that I use so many different controllers that I've never used a single one enough to break it, but I do have quite a few controllers that have a good amount of hours in on them. So from what I've experienced, I honestly don't think it matters what controller you go with. I think they're all just as likely to break, so I guess just make sure it has a good warranty and get the controller that you think you'll like the most. Now the final thing to know is red flags to avoid in Xbox controllers. The biggest one is any controller that's a low price from a random company. These nearly always have a ton of input delay, which is the worst thing a controller can have. And in general, they usually just aren't well functioning. There'll be bugs with the sticks or the view or the button, and 9 out of 10 times it's going to be a bad experience. The other big red flag to avoid is paddle placement you don't like. I've learned that in the first day, first even few hours, if the controller isn't comfortable to hold, like my fingers feel cramped on the paddles or something, it almost never gets better if you try to push through and get used to it. So if you don't think a paddle layout or something on the controller is comfortable, I think it's better to just send it back or get a new controller than try to torture yourself to get used to it, because it almost never works. Now I mentioned my favorite Xbox controller might be the Vitrix Gambit, so let's go ahead and hop into a Fortnite game and see if I can catch a win. Nice, let's go! Oh no way I get hit with the bow. My aim so far is actually like really good. That's so annoying. Yo. Oh, what a shot. Oh my. Alright. I don't think I've missed like a shotgun shot. <laughs> I'm just not missing. with a DMR. Let me in. No way I clutched the hell. Okay, dude. Doesn't the scar have a little too many bullets in the clip? I mean, 30 is just too much. Dude, I have zero math. I need this refresh. I don't know if I drop on him, try to get in for the map, or stay high ground. I feel like high ground's a better play. No. Missed my shot. Oh, God. Wait, what happened to the other guy? He must have died to a fall. Let's go. Oh, well, I guess now you know the best Xbox controllers, what to look for and what to avoid. Again, I have all the links to these controllers in the description, so check them out and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.